Uh, so we'll get into them before the game gets started. Uh, just, just to give a little bit of info on the players and what sort of uh, interesting tidbits we can get out of them before their game starts. And then we'll crack over to um, solo streaming for both me and Phil, uh, also known as Reith here. Uh, did you want to crack us off, Reith, um, and ask Nick a few questions? Yeah, thanks, Sam. Um, so I guess, Nick, uh, first of all, welcome. Um, I'm also living in Canada, so uh, I guess you're certainly the uh, home ground favourite to the local MCP fans here. Um, but I guess some of the pre-game questions uh, that we wanted to ask, and I'll, I'll probably shoot uh, your questions first and then hand over to Sam for Morgan. Um, but I guess the first question was, um, what preparation, I guess, without giving away any any tech to Morgan here prior to the game, um, did you conduct, I guess, specifically in the lead-up to, to this match? Um, not much, actually. <laughs> I'm not... Uh, I'm more used to, like, the tournament style than, uh, say, the league setup, so... I uh, I thought a bit about like different rosters, like different scenario setups, and I did play one game with a friend of mine just to get a feel, but uh, not that much, honestly. <laughs> it's not really my style, um, but that's fine. I've played so I've played enough games. I feel confident-ish <laughs> in the in the outcome. Right. Yeah, uh, I guess the, the next one we had was, uh, is there a local game community um, that you're championing for the finals and any shout outs you want to give to some of the local players supporting you tonight? Yeah, um, the Montreal uh, meta has been uh, exploding recently. Uh, like in our local game store, we have on a Wednesday night, 14 to 17 players playing MCP. And uh, we also have often like players showing up on Sundays, like 8, 10. So like we have a really active community. It's really great. Uh, we started going to conventions a bit, uh, so like a little shout out to the uh, fellow Montreal Shark Tank players, uh, mostly Vodka Blitz and um, Nick Menard that have been uh, destroying the uh, tournaments they've been showing up to in the States so far. So uh, yeah, those are my shout outs. Uh, thank you. And I guess the, the final question uh, per game from us was, were, were there any things in your roster that you sort of wish you had um, available to you sort of tech-wise for this match or that you regretted not including, I guess, in the lead-up to these sort of final couple of rounds? Um, yeah, well, the main thing is um, <laughs> uh, when I was preparing for the... Considering what rosters to submit for the top cut, I really wanted to play something with Malekit and then my one of my good buddies uh, convinced me not to, so I do wish I had Malekit in my roster as uh, the 10th slot instead of someone else. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the only change I would do at this point. Yeah, everything else I'm super happy with. All right. Uh, thank you very much, and best of luck from the uh, Canadian fans uh, over here uh, supporting you. Thanks. Awesome. I'll jump in here and I'll ask Morgan some of the questions as well. Morgan, what sort of preparation... Uh, have you put into this match here without obviously giving away all your uh, inside info? Uh, there's not a lot of inside info to give away here. Um, it's funny. Uh, I was talking to Phil because Phil and I play all the time that I think this week in particular out of all the seasons of TTS I've played um, and all the preparation I've done, this has made me want to quit MCP more than anything else. I'm just like, oh, this is horrible. Um so I've done a lot, a bunch more prep for this game than I would normally because I think Nick's roster is an evil genius roster, and I'm in the locker here. Um, when Nick says he's confident, I don't think he's been um, overly confident. I think he's been um, a, a good approach to the game because I'm not confident at all. His his extract stealing tech is really good, and I'm in a whole bunch of trouble here. So I've tried to done done a bunch of prep to see if there's ways I can beat him on certain combos. And it's possible, but it's unlikely. I suppose it's sort of shout outs to the um the strength of Nick there and sort of the preparation and the uh his list decision there. Oh absolutely. He's as I said, it's an evil genius roster. Um he's done really well building this and it's um you know, I've admired his play style watching it. I don't I mean look, I've got Voodoo and Cat, we've both got Voodoo and Cat. Um but I've admired watching how he, he synergizes his squads together to pull off really good victories. So um, I'm sort of playing it, but quietly cheering for for you know Nick doing so well in executing this this roster and the squad. So yeah, it's a very good squad, and he's a good player. Awesome. We'll jump over to. Um... <laughs> uh, is there a local scene you're a part of that you wanted to shout out here? 
Yeah, absolutely. So the, well, I mean, you guys are the Simple Math streaming channel and that's my new sort of gaming club um, after I moved up to Brisbane. So really for Corey for helping me out and Tobias um, in some practice games, I think they've got, what are their fake names on Discord? It's Squill and Spiral. And also Philly, um, the old faithful mate, um, thank you once again for, for all the prep work you've done for me. I'm not sure it'll help in this one, but it's been uh, it's been a good ride with you, mate. Anytime, mate. Yeah, it's been a bit of a rough week. <laughs> uh, is there also anything that you wish you could have changed or wish you hadn't changed leading up to the uh, cuts there for your roster? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. And um, for this matchup specifically, the one character that I would trade almost any for would be Loki. Um, I, I really wish I had Loki because with Loki I could stop potentially um, Magic Nick doing a, an advanced R&D round one Black Cat Steel. At the moment, I, there's, I just physically can't stop it. So Loki would have possibly prevented that based on certain things. So that would have been handy. Um, the other one that I would have liked probably was, and I've said this a few times in the cut so far, is Sword Base. I think that um, me dropping that, it made sense at the time, but you know, just how the, the matchups and the games have played out, I, I would have really liked to have Sword Base in the roster. Thank you very much to both of you for coming on and chatting with us before game. Uh, we thoroughly enjoyed the info that you're providing us and hopefully providing for the people listening and watching. I'm sure they thoroughly enjoyed the, the insights for us there. Well, we'll go no, and uh, leave you guys here, but best of luck to both of you and thanks for uh, chatting with us. Cheers, mate. How did that sound to you, Nick? Is that, is that a fair assumption? I'll oh, we'll just have a little few technical issues here. Uh, I didn't notice the overlay, so I'm just changing that for you now while I also give uh, Reith a call here and we'll bring in his audio chat. technical issues here just waiting for Reith to connect now uh, so while the lads are doing that and while I'm waiting for Reith to join in uh, looks like we have a priority role and the winner is Morgan so Morgan's going to have priority here And it looks like we've also got an accuser coming in for Wargaming Dad. Uh, so we greatly appreciated that there for you. We're rotating board sides. Uh, and they have the crises. So it looks like we've got Montessi Formula and Gamma Wave. All right. Hello, Sam. How are you good going? Good to join you. All good. We had a few technical issues at the start there, and I think I've resolved them on my end. Uh, the joy of having the five-minute delay, it takes a little bit for things to come through. No, no issues at all. So I think uh, we've got Darren here as well in the in the background as an accuser if uh, we do see anything, and I've let the players know as well. Awesome. Too easy. Thank you very much for doing that, Phil. I've just gone Anytime. over that Morgan's won the priority, uh, and then we have a Montessi Formula and Gamma Wave. And Nick is selecting selected fifteen threat. Okay, that's that's interesting. So, um, I guess in, in some of the prep leading into this, uh, Morgan definitely wanted uh, his extracts to slow the game down. So, I think it's it's interesting that uh, game has come up. So, I think that's probably his worst case scenario, um, and it means that Nick will be moving last here uh, on Gamma at 15. So it'll be interesting to see if Nick goes four or five wide here in my minds um, for the control option. What way is Morgan sort of normally lent 
in on his end there for going as wide as possible, or is he sort of a little bit narrower with throwing in some of his bigger characters? I think it's a balance for him between, uh, I guess, without going into the Rosses, between uh, a control and a and an attrition approach. Uh, I think Morgan's traditionally chosen the control, and I think that probably is more the option that we'll see come out here. And I think that's probably consistent with his his overall approach to the game. It's going to be a lot of decision-making, I think. Both people trying to duke each other out because um, both lists, I think the both of them sort of really heavily lean into control with their leaderships um, and not putting out a whole lot of attrition, especially um, Nick doesn't want to go into, if, if, if Morgan is taking Sam Wilson, uh, going in him and activating all of his leaderships there. Yeah, agreed. I, I think it's going to be interesting here because Gamma is traditionally a fight um, to see of how much he dances around that. Um, and I think the downside here for Nicky is that his, his extract steal and sort of run away and castle up, which he's uh, mentioned recently in, in some of the interviews he's done, um, is a lot harder to do on Gamma because he can't, unlike a sort of a split shape secure like a C or or even a D shape or something else, he can't necessarily get away as easily. Um, Gamma sort of really forces the fight, I think. Um, so potentially he could get to his back point, but I think we'll see some hulks here for sure. Uh, but very interested to see, I guess, what the exact squad makeup will be. Mm, yeah, especially because it's straight down the middle for both of them. Um, so as you were saying, like it's it's harder to do sort of those shenanigans, and then they're only worth one point each as well. So they're not going to give you that massive lead like a single extract would. Yeah, so I think the secure is going to be the big one here. But uh, the Montessi, I think, can be impactful, especially. I mean, the points obviously matter, but also for the attrition edge as well. Mm-hmm. Again, that nice beam off can always be nice. I don't think it neither yeah, player like, has smashed, do they? Uh, not off the top of my head, no, I don't think so. I know Morgan definitely doesn't. I don't think Magic Nick does. Here we go. So we've seen a full wide option from Magic Nick. Do you want to go over Nick's uh, roster and cards here? And then I'll, we'll go over Morgan's afterwards. Yep. So we've got actually a Sam leadership for Nick, which I think is is a good twist. So, uh, Sam, you've got Miss Marvel, um, and you've mentioned in his recent interview, he's mentioned some of the control elements that she provides through the throw and also her her uh, push on her builder on her um, in big inside and Ghost Spider and Hulk to round out that four-wide control. And you've got Morgan going five-wide with Juggernaut. Oh, sorry, I'll let you roll into that. And his tactics cards, Fancy R&D, uh, and Brace for his two restricted. Mission objective, uh, Birds of Prey, uh, and Avengers Assemble. So, all good cards. Mm-hmm. And, then over to and I'll hand over to you for Morgan. I haven't seen yet. I was too busy focusing on Nick's stuff. Uh, we've also got another Sam leadership, obviously. Morgan seems to be pioneering uh, Sam Wilson at the moment. Uh, we've got Sam, Luke Cage, and then we've got a Heroes for Hire. Yeah, we've got a Heroes for Hire card there as well. Black Widow with those sneaky uh, long moves and also with the uh, stealth. Uh, wonderful, nice little pick there if he had some long range shooting. Juggernaut. For obviously for going straight down the gamma middle and toad uh the two restricted cards we got patch up and brace for impact heroes for hire do you know who i am and avengers assemble so i think this is this is interesting this is almost a hulk and juggernaut battle um but the the trade-off i guess for the, the juggernaut over instead of hulk is that you can bring i guess the five wide um so i th- I think Morgan's splash pieces to me seem a little bit more, especially in Luke Cage. I think he's got at least a frontline beater there. Um, whereas I think uh, we're going to see Nick play a little bit more cagey here and try and leverage some of that control going second. Um, so I think Morgan's going to be looking potentially for some dazes and to leverage that last move, uh, last round move with Juggernaut. Um, so I think we're in for a hell of a game here. Yeah. Being able to go last on something like Gamma is massive at times, especially if you've got the control to throw people off at the end. Just make sure everything's all good on my end while these players are setting up uh, the deployment here. So I think we're all pretty straightforward and chat seems to be going wild. Um, I'm having a bit of an issue to see chat just because I've got to set up a few overlays and stuff like that on my end. Um, so if anything pops out to your Sure to shout it out there. We are in a little bit of a delay as well, so that does make it a bit harder to interact with the chat. Um, yeah, it does. Stuff so I think there's, easier. there's some there's some good discussions happening here um, in the chat at the moment. 
So I think they're going through at the moment. I'm looking through the discussion about, I guess, the the calls for the lists. The, the deployment here has been lightning quick, uh, which makes sense. I mean, it's it's literally is it's E shape E shape. Uh, so it's right at the middle. There's no surprise, I think, in the in the deployment. Yeah, and th there's no advantage to sitting out wide either. There's no side grabs or side pulls or sneaky sort of things you can do later in the rounds. It's just not sort of worth it. So I think you're definitely going to see an extract grab in the center here somewhere. And I think we're going to see a toad grab it. And I think we're going to see toad grab it somewhere near that size one banner um, on Morgan's side. Because um, there's not as much terrain there for Hulk to throw in the center, which I think advantages Morgan because Toad's going to be sitting there with no power to, um, to brace that off. So I think that's probably an initial start, uh, I guess, extract up for Morgan. And it'll be interesting to see if Nick can counter and, and hold up the secure points at the end of the round. Mm. Yeah, it is nice to see that the middle is quite open. There's only the size three crates here, which are a bit bigger than I thought they would be. I thought they'd be size two, uh, but everything else is size two and one. Uh, so even if they had the smash that I was talking about for the beams, it wouldn't have made much of a difference anyway. So Morgan's gone the double move juggernaut to the middle. Mm. Okay, so that's that's I guess a very defensive knowing that juggernaut's going to be hard to really remove i don't think there's there's almost any chance unless hulk spikes uh in a big way to remove uh juggernaut yep and then i suppose because both players don't have a massive amount of attrition outside their two main sort of six and five threat characters they're going to be fighting over the middle point so being able to guarantee that montessi on to juggernaut and not lose in case they get a spike into toad is probably a big call there for morgan so I think you're going to see, I think for me, I guess, so who's the beat down here? For me, it has to be Nick. I think he's going to have priority uh, next round and probably every round as we go from here on, uh, pending something going drastically wrong. Um, so I think it's it's going to be interesting to see if he can leverage cards like Birds of Prey to remove Sam and if he can remove some of those uh, other models or ping pong Hulk uh, juggernaut enough with Hulk to, to get an advantage. What was the play for the advanced R&D here on this turn for Nick? Is that just to power up Ghost Spider for her pulls? Yeah, potentially, to allow her to, so I guess, move. and I mean, more power for Ghost Spider is always a good thing, or you could potentially even give it to to Miss Marvel here to start helping her for, for other turns. Um Shield throw from Sam, was it? Yep. Actually, a couple of damage through on uh, Juggernaut there. Yeah, that shield throw from Sam has been quite obnoxious. I've seen over the last sort of few games in the cut here, being able to get the ricochet and the push uh, has caused quite a few issues. A bit. The bit that always pushes me over is the uh, ignoring cover. It's it, it yeah. burns my soul. You position a character well and it ignores it. Yeah, um, and it always spikes, right? But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that push is just so frustrating. Uh, the reason I think this will be a fun game is we're not seeing what I think. Uh, Morgan was alluding to in the pre-game and a lot of what we tested this week was a lot of the filthy extract janks that I think this match, this crisis matchup has probably denied Nick the opportunity to play um, and that's the sort of voodoo cat and really leveraging that that leadership um, which I think Morgan was was really concerned about and rightfully so. I think it's incredibly strong and a, it's a, a hell of a, a list design. So um, I think this denies that, and this is more, almost more of a feels like more of a traditional game of Marvel with the secures and the extracts and a little bit of like uh, spikes and attrition needed, uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to extract ceiling. So I, I think this is a this is a wholesome top four game in my mind. Yeah, it is, it is nice to see because they are both quite overbearing characters in normal rosters, let alone under Steve's leadership. Just, uh, there's uh, a great comment from the from the chat too that um. The juggernaut bit stops the Gwen pull to to bring them back in, which is an excellent point. Yep, beautiful. Chat's always got the goods. What I do notice on Morgan's side, he does have that two threat just to sit at the back of the board holding his book, whereas we don't get the same on Nick's side. Nick's got to put in a bit more expensive character, and as you can tell, he's already got it on a leader, so that leader 
can become a bit of a priority target there as well. And I think it's a win here if if all that we're getting out of Hulk is a throw. And I think what we were seeing there is the measurement for Juggernaut to see if it could throw Juggernaut into Toad. If all he's doing is a throw, especially if that's not hitting a character, I think that's a big win for Morgan. If all he's doing with his six red is double move, throw, sit on a middle point. Um, I think that that's a that's a huge win for for Morgan um, in that respect. We do also have the uh, threat on Morgan's side with the do you know how I am as well. Being able to, if you get an embiggened Miss Marvel, she's size four, and a Hulk being thrown into your back lines as well, which could be quite devastating. We have at least got Brace on Nick's side to retaliate against that if need be. Might just end up trading cards at some point for those two. Yeah, I, I think we, we're maybe going to see that a little bit more on um, maybe a Hulk and... A Hulk, I can't see it coming up in a situation where Morgan would have an opportunity to throw Miss Marvel without her playing some of her other tactics cards because I think she's going to transform back at the end of her turn. So I, I think Morgan will not have an opportunity for that. I've not played many games against Miss Marvel, so she's a bit of an interesting character. I love her. I think she's a, she's a really fun model. I think she's underappreciated at the moment. Yeah, Travis was running an Inhumans list a while back um, using Miss Marvel, Medusa, and uh, Zemo in Inhumans just mm -hmm. with this sort of re-roll bubble. And it was it was, it was quite nasty sort of in-your-face um, dice. And I was, I've was i been very impressed with the maneuverability she offers um, yeah, that, and the versatility when she gets the power. Mm -hmm. That place with that big base as well. Uh, transformations just seem quite strong depending on obviously characters. I think Ant-Man's obviously very... Not taking much in the matter, and he's got a big transform as well, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. I think one of the differences, though, is that Miss Marvel holds onto her extracts. Yeah, okay. So the one game I had against Miss Marvel, um, I was playing one of the local character guys in our uh, Swiss league, and I thought he was just having fun with the names. Till I realized and looked at a card that that's what he was, she was actually doing, like throwing out the trash and stuff like that. It had me in tears. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a nice backstop for Luke Cage as well, and to Hulk there to stop the. Yeah, uh, I think that, that was really good placement using that really that large base. Um, against Nick here. So I think this is one of those examples of where R&D could have been good because it would have allowed um, Gwen to potentially move, double move and, and then get a push off. Mm -hmm. It's still on play at least, I think, unless you want to use the one power for Miss Marvel. Uh, but you've got to pretty much get parallel uh, with Luke Cage there to even be able to get that off because of the... Yeah, uh, you'd, be, you'd be having a position, as you said. So I think advantage Morgan initially here, um, and I think that's mainly offered by the priority and the five wide. Mm -hmm. So I think just good. It's really good to see positioning be such an important factor here. So I think Nick's got some great control, but uh, some good positioning on Cage here has really denied him the ability to displace Luke Cage here uh, on this activation. I think, or it's it's made it harder. I wasn't sure if you'd said this earlier because I was trying to set up the stream, but did you? is this a scenario that either of you have tested with Montessi and Gamma? Uh, we did Gamma, but not Montessi. So we tend to focus on the worst case, and Gamma was the worst case for Morgan, uh, for the secures, mm -hmm. um, for, for Nix. So Morgan was actually worried about 15 and, and this, um, but not this squad makeup. Uh, for Nick, so this this is a as always, you never predict everything. This is a unique um, crisis that certainly I wasn't involved in in testing. So it's it's good, it's it's fresh, uh, and I think it shows that Nick's got a, a good, unique approach, I guess, in in dealing with uh in dealing with the problem. Avengers Assemble. I like this here. It gets Hulk out of the way. A 
and that's potentially two victory points worth if, if this sort of pans off for Nick. So I think um, that's a good way of dealing with this. Oh, and the push is towards the character as well. And the more it is. So she'll get two two shots at it here. There's so a Nick is little very much there. after the wild. Yeah. yeah, I like that. It was a good use of. And the reroll here for Marvel coming in. I'd probably be a little bit frustrated I didn't get it on that first one. That is the joy of a one out of eight chance. It is, but I think it's almost a five dice builder. So I think the odds are that he definitely should get this wild here. Dice aren't rocking up again for for Nikki. Oh, there we go. The wild. That's good to see. You want you want to see the averages pan out, <laughs> yeah, especially when you've rolled twelve dice with the two crits overall. Yeah. I suppose he has got the advanced R and D for later on in the game. Obviously, it's normally used for turn one place, but um, it can be handy for those situational places where you just need that one. Extra I think card. it's a great card. Um, even to feed Miss Marvel later in the game. I mean, to give her an ability to. To throw as well as transform and get that double displacement and potentially a daze um, on some of Morgan's sort of more vulnerable uh, lower threat pieces, I think could be really impactful that game. I'm sure after this game is over, both players' brains are going to be a little bit melted because this is all about oh, positioning yeah, yeah. and everything. <laughs> Just the stress, the stress of any, I think, finals game uh, is, yeah, there's, there's probably a lot of self pressure put upon them. Um, but even to get to top four is an incredible achievement for, for both players. Yeah, yeah. It just leads to the caliber of player, especially when they're in both playing more of a control type game here. There's going to be a whole lot of attrition coming out. But if the chat has any questions to ask later on in the game, um, because we're on a delay. Uh, when we come up to question asking at the end of the game there, uh, we won't have time to ask fan mm. um, chat questions. So if you want to post them a little bit earlier, that way we're aware of what's being asked and I'll write them down for you as well. Good to see Fink's just uh, checking in as well. He's just asked us if we could just send the board in a little bit more. Oh, yep. No worries. I suppose I'm That's used to <laughs> it being a lot of a wider game, but when they're both playing down the middle, there's no point being out so wide. Yeah. It's a it's a good crowd we've got. This is some it's good to see some uh, community support behind the the games. It's very lively. It's uh, it's great to see. You think it's sort of with it being both slower scoring at the start here. You think it's going to be dragged out sort of a five or six round? No, I I don't. Um, I think these first few rounds are key. I think it all depends. The only way I see it dragging out is if uh, Nick swings the points back. I think the early advantage at the moment is probably Morgan's. Mm -hmm. So I see, uh, I could see it only dragging out if they say tying points or if Nick scores it back and slot can slow Morgan's sort of secures game down. Um, so if they either tie, if they tie the middle a few times, like Researcher, I think it could could really slow down, and that's when Gamma sort of starts becoming sort of a one point each secure. Um, I can see it slowing down, but I, I'm predicting a faster game. I think we'll see probably three or probably four rounds. I think maybe five at the worst. I suppose it all sort of depends if you get that sneaky back Gamma at some point as well. Which they've both got characters, um, both got more than enough displacement to, to do that. Mm -hmm. Sort of between uh, Juggernaut, Sam, and even Luke Cage with his throw and his spender, Morgan's got some displacement, and then everyone in Nick's character got, has got a displace option. You have also got the sneaky toad as well. His little tongue lash. Yeah, yeah with the push. With yeah, it's yeah. a good point. <laughs> he could be the clutch player. <laughs> it could be in denying, sitting all the way back and denying the uh, that back point. Sometimes the two threats are the most important people uh, models in the game. 
So I think we're seeing the wide Gwen play here to try and get that angle for the push off the point. Uh, while still maximising Gwen's survivability by staying within two of the gamma. Yeah, so that people aren't aware of the gamma range, you've got to be inside two to not cop the one damage from being outside so the Nick gamma. So didn't shoulders. get the wild there for the push, but he'll he'll now generate the guaranteed power for the web line here. It's all about playing for those consistent plays, but sometimes getting the uh, the trigger can save you in action, obviously, as well. Making sure you're being consistent with things like that there. So I'll be interested to see here if Morgan Avengers assembles back now um, with Cage to tie that center point and with Widow. So if he brings them both in, I could see Morgan using this to get that center gamma shelter and Sam securing that back gamma. So I'd be interested to see if Morgan's Avengers Assemble comes out here. Yeah, we did see an earlier play from Nick's Avengers Assemble, so he, Morgan does have that. Yeah, play. and just sort of eliminating both of it, right? So mm -hmm. I think that's what you're seeing Morgan maybe look at now. I mean, Sam hasn't got a really good option, but I think Morgan will be wanting to maximize his, his points. Yeah, he's looking at it. There we go. Avengers Assemble's coming out. Well and truly called it there. <laughs> Such a great tactics card. Oh, it's brilliant. And it's so cheap as well. It is. I think it's the uns I think it's often not spoken about enough for the strength of um of the Avengers rosters. Well it's why Sam's so good. It's the out of activation movement. And this is it all over again. You spend all Yeah, I mean time. all that good work that yeah. Bunch of time and power to um, move these characters off, and then they just spend one power, no activation, nothing needed, and they're back to where they were. There we go. We got some love from Fink <laughs> for moving the screen, and Tom Harper's in as well. So it's good to see Tom back. Uh, hello again, Tom. It's good to see you back in the MCP. And we got the. Uh, American crowd as loud as ever. Hopefully uh, Darren's still there as well. So we've got Australia, America and Canada and, and also Europe represented here already. So truly a global game. Yeah. It's the joy of TTS. Brings in all the crowds. I think, so I think what we're seeing here is Morgan just go for the uh, shield throw. Probably not hoping for any damage here into Hulk and just wanting to generate a power. So I think you'd be very happy not to, to get any damage through on that. We've got Steve Vignola from uh, Canada for some of Nick's local crowd. And just the one damage on Hulk overall at the end there. So 5-2 to Morgan first round. Yeah, it's a strong first round from Morgan there, being able to pick up that middle point as well as have the, the two extract lead. Yeah. So he's paying a power to deny the damage from the Gamma. Um, I think was that what that um, ping from Morgan was there was so, about. Yeah. Those characters that can just reduce to zero are just brilliant at stopping things like that. Comment from Sploosh, really uh, trolling up the chat by saying, "I wish, wish somehow they could both lose." <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the opposite camp uh, as a as a good friend of Morgan and uh, as someone living in Canada. I want them both to win. Yeah, I think listening to the Danger Room, both of them aren't fans of Sam's leadership. But they often oh yeah, like. like... <laughs> 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 There was some there was some good discussion in uh, some of the discords today about um, legacy and uh, what would happen if this was a three round game and and Morgan lost to legacy uh, and also about um, just a little bit of trolling about let's support Malekith for the win. <laughs> um, but I, I'm sticking with my uh, supporting Morgan as a friend and also being very happy if we see um, 
Canada and Nick take it home. So I'm sort of, regardless of the result of this match, I'm supporting sort of whoever, whoever wins it. Both strong support from both people, and they're both strong players as well. Pass yeah, pass at the beginning of the round. I think that's a good option, and that maximizes um, Nick's displacement. Especially when no one's being overly threatened either for a daze or a KO. It doesn't cost you much at all. Well, it costs you nothing, really. The builder going into Hulk? Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if he gets the wilds. Two wilds here is probably what he's fishing for. Um, there's an odd, there's an off chance that he he does a bit of damage. I think he's got to pick a piece to activate, but if you can get those two wilds through, it could be game changing. It doesn't happen often, but it happens just enough that it can really swing a game um, by denying Hulk some actions. Yeah, it's the two wilds for a stagger, is it? Yeah, two wilds for stagger on the builder. Just having that opportunity cost to be able to get that out is massive as well. You're already doing the builder anyway with that extra little bit on the top if you get lucky. Yeah. So Morgan's probably happy hit there that he didn't get more than four damage through. So Hulk's at least not got the extra attack dice. Where did we see the power come from Hulk? Because Hulk normally generates three power per turn, doesn't he? He did. I think he used it for a defensive reroll there. Oh, okay. With uh, Hulk, not puny banner. Oh, yes. Yep. Oh, because he had power from last turn. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and he had the three. He had the damage as well overall. So. Yep. I'm interested to see if uh, Nick goes the violent option here and murders Black Widow and gives Morgan the activation and the heal with the leadership, or if he just goes the, the pull Luke Cage off the point uh, option and just builds some power. So It's an interesting choice for Nick, isn't it? Yeah, or if he activates one of his other pieces. Because Hulk's always going to be last for most of the amount of displace he can do. The other three there. Not super damaging, but um and nothing's in ricochet range either besides those two in the middle. So not hitting mm. any of those back characters. Yeah, this is very much lining up to be a, a very control uh game. Which makes sense if you're trying to dance around the same leadership. <laughs> The hated leadership that everyone seems to not enjoy because it's a detriment <laughs> when you're playing how the game should be is most likely to be played which is attrition. Yeah, I mean, like, it's never going to be popular, right? <laughs> I played, I played in a lot into it. Uh, I guess over the last few seasons, um, playtesting for Morgan. Um, how did you feel <laughs> with all those games? Uh, it's it's beatable, but it's it's very strong. Um, I guess I have personal views on it, and I I think the leadership is part of the problem, but I also think there are a number of other issues, and the depth of the roster, Sam as a character, Avengers Assemble as a card. Um, so I think it's not just, it's not certainly not as bad as I think as it was with all you've got and sort of the beam meta back in the day and last move, go wide, just bow everything off with Enchantress. Um, I think it's a lot more playable now into it. It's certainly a lot of layers to the leadership. All the cards, there yeah, and I, th as well as there. I think unfortunately teams like Web Warriors, which which have some game into it, um, we're not seeing as much just due to the where the meta is at. But I'm interested to see if, if if we see a resurgence of some of those things, whether or not team will go down. I think there's always a, there's always another team who can counter you. It's just whether or not you run into them. Yeah, 
I suppose Web Warriors are just a bit harder to play as well because you need to play really well with all their control because you haven't got the attrition if you do start falling behind where you need to get the attrition out besides that one. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. I think certainly from my view, they're probably the most, they're probably the most, uh, but one of the hardest and highest uh, affiliation skill ceilings. Um, and there's some players who play them superbly. And there's those ones that play the ASM leadership. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's a lot. Anything different, anyone that's running something that's not the the common popular thing, I'll definitely get behind. Getting lots of cheering for Nick here. Bit of Omnis jumping in for Rhyme. And some local Quebec support. Yeah. The classic underdog story. <laughs> Got the two-time champion here. Going up against another strong player, so everyone normally cheers for the underdog. So I think we're seeing the builder option here from Miss Marvel. So she's not going with the transform into Luke Cage. So Nick gets the wild, and we'll get three damage through here too. Oh, so it was into uh, Black Widow. Sorry, not in the cage. All right, just straight dazed her off. Yep. And that uh, push being before damage is dealt is uh, quite impactful here too. And this is Morgan using the same leadership in response. I suppose that placement there is a bit more for denying his back point than anything. Hmm. Well, I think Morgan's got the points advantage now, so if he can even cut the middle or just stay ahead um, for as long as possible, um, it will help him. So Morgan's now got a target with Sam here that he can go after in, in Miss Marvel mm -hmm. now that she's on the center. And we're seeing the throw here as well. I think they're just out of base to base, so no damage was applied. Was it a push or a throw on her? It's a throw, yeah. Three power yeah. throw. Quite a good throw too, and the fact that it's range three. A bit of a standout there. Most throws are range two. Yeah, uh, some funny comments. Finksters <laughs> talking about assault. I'm assuming they're hearing the same comments now. <laughs> Splish has got my back on it. Either way, this is this has already been quite a technical game, which has has been good to watch. Yeah. Definitely shows the skill of both players. Yeah, I, I think it's a dis disappointing almost that we did get Gamma and the fact that we didn't get to see some of a, maybe a different shape. Because um, I think it does limit some of the things we could see. Especially listening to the interview. They've got a, both of, a lot of turn one plays they can get into. Um, especially when you've got Nick with Steve leadership there as well. He had a lot of plays set up for himself with Hulk and things like that. Him not being able to display those, uh, and then Morgan's generally excellent control and rotation that he has in most games, we don't get to see that really much either. Yeah. So I think that's probably the downside. <laughs> Ryan's uh, just jumped in the, the chat now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So there, there is some. Uh, it's good to see some other strike better support here as well. Just mention ASM and Ryan will come running. That's true. Yeah. 
the bo- the boogeyman, and uh, he appears. What do you think the play was behind moving Toad there rather than just sort of keeping him where he was? Mm. So I believe he moved. I think up. he's in. I think he's still in heroes for high range, so that's yeah. potentially why. Um, so as long as he's within three, Morgan's got a bit of an out, and he can potentially move Cage back to somewhere where he's becoming a scoring piece. So I think that's probably some of it. I think that's his, and it gives it means that Sam can then push up if he can protect Toad with um, Luke Cage, and Sam can get up to the middle. It means Sam can put some scoring pressure on Miss Marvel and um, and Nick Sam. Okay, that makes sense. For for me, Juggernaut, I think he's going to be the key one here. Um, so Juggernaut is going to have the power to potentially move display someone off a point and slide and then throw another person off the point with you know who I am. Um, so I think he is maybe the clutch piece here that actually wins Morgan in the center this this round. Yeah, because Luke doesn't have a size four throw, does he? He does. So Hulk, so he could potentially move Hulk through yeah. Juggernaut away. Um, so I'm interested to see how that pans out. So we're seeing the shield throw here into Toad. But Morgan's positioned really well again in putting base to base. He's making that push angle quite difficult. That's going to be an interesting angle right there. That's for sure. Uh, he's positioned him well. Yeah, so I think Morgan's saying that he he hits the base. Yeah. So I think yet again that I guess Morgan there's a couple of times just sent it with Hulk and um, Luke Luke Cage on that sort of first round, and then again there where his his positioning with where he's put the models has really become into play here um, and, and impacted on some of the displacement that um, Nick's got available. And I suppose that answers my question from before of why was Toad put there? If he was anywhere else, he would have been pushed away from the point. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that Toad does have a get out of jail free and the fact that he can uh, slippery back. Yes, that is true. Is it, is it slippery away, or is it just a free move? Uh, it's a it's a medium advance. I'm pretty sure. Give me two seconds. And I think it's any direction. Yeah, it's omnidirectional. Yeah. Yeah, it's omnidirectional. I think here's the shield throw into Miss Marvel here. And you'll note Sam doesn't have a, an extract on him. So I think you might see a more aggressive use of Sam here going forward or potentially the defensive option and he sits him sort of back again to keep him safe on his home shelter. Morgan using those custom strike better uh, movement tools with their nice glowing effects. Sam's done. Do you think we see the jugs into the Duhenheim into Hulk and throw him with the point, forcing him to come back into the middle without doing any action economy there? Uh, potentially. I mean... I think Nick's gonna have, Nick's gonna have last activation here, so I think he was happy to daze Widow early in the round. Um, so I think, based on what he's measuring, I think we're gonna see Gwen go first, and Hulk go last is is always a good activation because it re- just keeps the danger of Juggernaut away. So potentially Morgan, we might see the 
do you know who I am, throw on uh, Hulk further back to get him out of the way and maybe an attrition attacking a ghost spider. Oh, he's a toad. There's some good damage on toad there from Gwen and the push as well. That's whether you just slippery straight back to where he was. Yeah, I'd expect to see the slippery here. That was a decent swing into Toad, wasn't it? It was. I mean, you're going to get spikes eventually rolling those sort of four dice attacks. He's rolled enough already. Miss Marvel rolling quite a few at the start there. Mm, so we might see a swing back to, to Nikki based on how this sort of round is, is panning out. Which uh, puts us down for a very good close game. I suppose the one downside to Morgan sex card's choice is he doesn't have mission objective. Uh, which he doesn't, but he has vital. got he's got patch up here, so I'm interested to see if patch up comes out here. Um, because both Cage and Sam have got full power to heal up Toad, which could be quite clutch here. I think we're going to see the uh, the pull off the point here as well. It's a great use of Ghost Spider here by Nick. He's really maximised uh, the impact on on Morgan's and added some pressure onto that back point. Mm. It's given him um, a lot more things he has to position around, not just Hulk or mm. Miss Marvel. He's got so much control. He has a lot of issues trying to... Uh, he's done it well so far with uh, blocking with bases, but you can definitely see it become an issue later on. Yeah, and I think if, if Nick can remove that activation and still keep his characters alive with, with Hulk um, consistently again next round then we might see a situation here in the sort of following rounds where Nick actually is moving last with Hulk. And I think that's really a worst case for Morgan. Yeah. Um, he has left just more eyeballing that Sam in range of Toad here for patch up. So I'm interested to see if that does come out. Or maybe Morgan is happy if he dazes Toad and then he could just move Luke Cage back into the point uh, with the leadership or potentially Sam. I think Morgan's measuring for the move slide attack or just a move attacking to, to, to Gwen here. And then just tie at that middle point. There's no Hulk smash at the moment. And he does have his two power throw. Do you think this is where you see a bit more attrition going into Ghost Spider and trying to get her dazed and off the board? Potentially. I mean, the other thing Morgan could do here is move, put it down, and even use the book is the other option, and add the extra dice and go first into, into Ghost Spider. Um, she doesn't have the power anymore to do any of her shenanigans because she's only got one for next turn. Um, so it's going to be a very frustrating piece to play with. But I think it's also bad for, for Morgan to some extent if he does daze one of Nick's pieces and gives him a leadership activation here. Mm, so I think true. Nick's really good play here is put... You can see Morgan considering... Let's put Morgan's, I think, really tossing and turning as to what he wants to actually do here. Because he could spike as well and just daze her. And then you've got Miss Marvel Yeah, and another option is he just moves, throws Hulk way back and then... Um, And then sort of sees how he goes. Yeah, he's out. So he's out of range.
Uh, but the downside of doing any throw before the attack and potential days on Ghost Spider, if he's aiming for that, is that he'll get a leadership trigger to move Hulk straight back. So whatever he does, he's going to have to displace Hulk after that that attack if he's doing any. Yeah. And Hulk's base positioning here is really stopping Juggernaut being able to slide onto that point. The only way to get it would have been to sort of go around almost to sort of the size of this size three terrain down here um, to get it. I think it looked like Nick was trying to base block a little bit as well uh, with his Gwen earlier. Caused a few issues. This is vital here. If he doesn't get the angle right, it's going to be very detrimental. I suppose Morgan has the annoyance of playing around Sam's leadership on his opponent's end. Which makes it <laughs> for both people. <laughs> A well deserved. Yeah. What was his other ping there? I didn't, it was off my screen. So he's doing an attack here and adding the attack dice. So he's doing the uh, Montessi attack, I think, here into okay. um, Ghost Spider. I only throwing the three extra dice in from the uh, juggernaut move. Yep. So you'd be a little bit frustrated about to give you a Morgan after that. One success on a nine dice attack is certainly not the average. No. I don't think something here. So this is the second attack in a Hulk. Mm -hmm. And now I think we'll see the throw. Yeah, this is three power so he, if he throws Hulk into Ghost Spider here, there's no brace. So mm. I guess it depends what he's what he's after here. I think he'll go for the displacement. No, or just the throw straight into him. So he's thrown directly into Ghost Spider for the damage. Yeah, I think he sort of figured out he couldn't really do a whole lot. He didn't want to risk if it was a failure anywhere. And now we have our violent game. I think oh, said five damage. Earlier in the uh, in the chat saying, they haven't seen Morgan put this many attacks through in a while. Well, those attacks have just well and truly come through the skyrocket now. Yes, yeah, interestingly, it wasn't, it wasn't the attack that did any of the damage. It was all the throw. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I think Morgan fortunate at the end there that actually, in a way, that, that helped helped him. We have got a lot more. So that's interesting. I th yeah, so I think Morgan probably attrition-wise is now ahead, I would say. Um, I would say until this Hulk activation. And I think we're going to see maybe a bit of Hulk destroying the world here. And the patch up from Sam into Toad. Because Hulk's got a lot of tech online now, having that two power for the throw and then the four power with whatever he needs to do there. Yeah, I'd be interested to see. Morgan, Morgan's got a bit of defensive tech here with Heroes for Hire and then two dangers to ignore with Luke Cage and, and Brace, um, which can slow Hulk down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and the leadership can at least help Morgan tie that point. Would you have liked more of an Indom in this matchup? Rather than Brace? Uh, I think Brace is probably just as good. Okay. Um, and I think either Hulk or Juggernaut don't mind being displaced too much because both of them have got ways of gaining that maneuverability back either through um, Gamma Leap or just mm -hmm. Juggernaut wanting to move. And I suppose it probably didn't matter as much because they've got Avengers Assemble and the Sam Leadership. So that sort of negates... Mm -hmm. 
later on anyway. Oh, so big attack from Nick into Morgan's juggernaut, it looks like. So Morgan blocking three with the reduction and he'll take uh, full damage here. So that's quite big in a juggernaut. So that's it. The game has turned violent. Yeah. Which is always good to see. That's what you want in a Marvel game. The Hulk smash into a Furious for Hire. Yeah, keep. I like this. Keep, keep Juggernaut alive, and you can place off one. I think Morgan may be trying to get the placement one to deny Hulk the leap here. I think, and two to add another scoring piece onto that back gamma. So I think this is that layered tech coming in, even though the. the the dice probably didn't go Morgan's way there that round, with the exception of probably the throw. Um, oh, hockey's on fire. <laughs> oh. The big guy's angry. That's another another big attack. This in a, this in a cage, of course. Cage blocking two, and that'll Six. be cage done. Classic throw before damage. I think it's after damage is dealt. Oh, is this one after damage is dealt? Oh, so it must have been the builder again. Oh, okay. Pushing. Oh, no, sorry, before damage is dealt. No, throw the character. No, you're right. It's this dagger that's after attacks resolved. Oh, right, yeah, okay. So Morgan will get a leadership trigger here. Now, would you have liked to have seen Luke not cop that much damage, or do you not mind Luke being dazed there? Oh, I think Morgan wouldn't have wanted to lose Luke Cage there. Um, so I think those spikes definitely helps Nick. I suppose Nick doesn't really care because he's got three characters on the, the mid table already. Well, Ghost Spider's dazed. So, oh, that's right. So I think what Morgan's looking at here is if he if he goes to that midpoint, then it it forces Hulk to throw either throw or keep um, either throw Juggernaut off to win the point and then allow him to move away, or to. Um, Or to just stay there and keep the throw, and you can potentially throw throw Sam instead. He's going for it. So Morgan choosing actually to use Toad here instead um, for the leadership trigger. Just to block off that uh, gamma leap. Block off the gamma leap. Yep. And I, I think we'll see Nick just draw out the brace here. And throw Hulk. Sorry, sorry, throw Juggernaut. And please excuse me, it is, uh, it's getting late my time. It's, it's been a, a long week. I'm powering through the energy drinks here at home. <laughs> you on the monsters there, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Sugar free <laughs> monsters to keep me up. <laughs> so this is interesting. So... He's going to throw Juggernaut, or he's considering throwing Juggernaut away here, I think is what he's looking at. Um, They're forcing him to move and slide to get back into action, I suppose, next turn. Yeah. I'm just interested to see if the value here of, of throwing him and drawing out that brace is going to help over the course of the game. I mean, he's going to, he can throw into Sam and avoid the brace, or he can throw into Toad and, and put some real scoring pressure on and just deny the brace and then gives him a throw next turn. Probably want him outside too, so he has to spend that one point to. Uh... Yeah, it just denies him a bit of power, right? Mm. 
It's the other interesting thing. Yeah, here we go. So he's he's throwing in for the power. He's in the brace. Like you were saying earlier. Well, no, I, I think Sam can't brace because he's got no power. Oh, so sorry, sorry. Sam will just Sam will just take the incoming damage, and he's dodged very well. We'll take three. So the interesting piece here for me is is Ghost Spider. She's going to have a whole bunch of power if uh, if Nick can keep Ghost Spider alive here. I can really see some impact on the board state uh, at the end of next round if if he can daze one of Morgan's pieces and sort of guarantee himself that last activation. So Morgan's still ahead, but Nick closing the gap that round. And I'd say Nick definitely ahead on the attrition there now that Hulk is, is down. Uh, oh, sorry, now that Juggernaut's down on uh, health as well. And then Luke So I think we may... Yeah, we may see... Uh, we may see potentially some extracts change hands here. She's got two less characters to count on points now as well with being them both injured. She's going to have to worry about Yeah, which, which... You're right, that can really... It may not seem clutch at the moment, but that might be the difference on potentially holding a secure or not. It just means the Black Widow is not doing what she normally does, which is steal those back points and be a nuisance because she's not going to cause any issues now unless you can get off a sneaky snagger or something like that with all the power she has. She can't just fight over that back point because it just is useless now because Sam just outscores it instantly. Yeah, certainly I, it almost feels like the Hulk presence is, is coming down the uh, down the board at Morgan um, onto his back point here. Hulk is just he's ex ex exerting his uh, power onto the table. Yeah. I think Morgan's just a little bit jealous because that's how he likes to play his Hulks. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be, you, you can imagine he'd feel a bit betrayed if he, uh, if he loses this game to, to someone else's Hulk. Yeah. Exactly what we want, a really, really close game. Mm -hmm. So I'd say at the moment, unless something drastic happens this round, we're probably going into around five. So with Morgan going for his big five threat in Juggernaut, would you have liked to have seen him with Hulk and maybe have both gone four wide? Well, I quite liked the five wide, um, to be honest. I, I, I honestly do. Um, I think maybe some of the attack dice haven't helped. Uh, I think Hulk's rolled very hot so far, mm. but inevitably that that will even out. So I, I quite I liked Morgan's squad here, and I thought he played a very good round one with Avengers Assemble. Um, so I, I think they've both got excellent squads, but I, I always prefer a little bit more width with uh on Gamma. If you're playing that sort of control list, and I think Morgan's will get a little bit more out of the leadership here, having some more characters online. Yep, fair enough. So we're seeing sort of the attacks into into Ghost Spider here. Yeah, get off the table early before she can impact the game too much. Yeah, and that also means that if he does KO or daze one of your other characters, so that's um, that's huge for last. Morgan. That's yeah, that's really big. That's the dice spiking back in his. As it always does, Marvel Marvel dice swing both ways. So yeah. that's that's huge, I think, for Morgan. I think if Ghost Spider had been allowed to activate there towards the end of the round, um, she potentially wins Nick the game. It makes it so easier for Nick Morgan be bit... now because he's got more a lot more activations even if he does lose the one days, forcing Hulk to not be it, able to go last. It does, and I think this is where the four wide starts to hurt a bit more. Um, unless he can get a, an activation advantage back here, which I think is tough. Um, I think we're going to start seeing Morgan activate last in the round and being able to influence those secures a little bit more. Yeah. So I think that was that was big for Morgan. Um, I think that probably kept him in the game. I, I would say almost advantage to Nick maybe leading into this round um, with how that book sort of board presence played out at the end of last round. But Sam really swung that back there with a big spike. Yeah. Yeah. That's massive. So pretty much just leans into what we were talking about earlier with the now it's three to five. Rather than being the full five. 
mods. Yeah, Morgan does have quite a few injured characters and a few are yeah. very close to being dazed as well. Um, so I think maybe Morgan just considering whether he places off the back of that Red Wing Assault. Of course, the advantage here for Morgan with Sam is that you naturally want to remove Sam um, as a piece because the leadership is so impactful. But not having an extract on Sam means that he's also not necessarily scoring you points if you're dazing him as an opponent. So I liked Morgan's use of Toad here to pick up that back book. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I think Morgan's target priority now that Ghost Bite has gone is a little bit easy. I think Sam is definitely going to be Morgan's attrition target here if you can get him because he's holding a book and it's the leadership. Yeah. And he's going to have to rotate him around if he wants to bring him up to have a bit more impact in the game as well. Yeah. So Morgan's just saying, they're just talking through the leadership order. Um, he's doing the leadership trigger. This massive here as well, being able to get someone in the correct position when you've only got three characters to play with now. So this is where um, Nick being able to, to use the leadership after uh, Morgan does his placement with um, Sam with the attacking character doing their after attacks resolved components first is 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 really important for for Nick here it means he can see what Morgan does assess the state of the board and then and then do the decision that's why it's big with uh Malekith's leadership because generally Malekith is the one attacking getting his leadership to go off and then you get Sam's leadership afterwards yeah So we're seeing Brace here. So the throw from Hulk into um, Juggernaut Toad. Into toad yep. Juggernaut into Toad, yeah. Not a fairly big attack from, from Hulk. He's just above average. He's rolling well. Oh, he's, of course, he's rolled the wild for the, uh, the second yep. throw. So we're going we're gonna to see Juggernaut go here, which will give Morgan another leadership trigger. So maybe Toad gets out of dodge here. So I'm interested to see if Toad maybe runs away here back to the safety of cage um, so those extracts starting to change hands and what we're also seeing is an earlier activation of hulk here which i think he's big because mm. um, it means he's not getting the full advantage he's being activated as an attrition piece and not getting his full control advantage so rather than that, maybe Cage coming forward. Maybe that's what Morgan's considering here is the, the Toad versus Cage option. No, he's going Toad. At least we've got on, with Juggernaut being flipped for next turn, Juggernaut has more control as well with him having his throw online now. Um, so it does give him a little bit more play. It's, considering it's true. The helmet wasn't really doing a whole lot for him. Against no, it was probably there more for the ghost spider bit, who's now yeah. not on the board. So, sort of a double whammy, I suppose, for Morgan getting him flipped, gets the helmet off, gets him into more of a control piece. So, Toad stayed in position here. Is he doing the shot? So maybe wave? Morgan. Oh, okay, that makes perfect sense. Yep. Yeah, because that Thundercap can come and clutch sometimes, I suppose. Just getting that range three out. 
especially with the extra dice. And I guess as Hulk takes a little bit more damage and um, and powers up a bit more, and adding sort of two, three, four dice really starts to yeah, especially on gamma when you're all sitting clustered up a lot more. Obviously, he's got Juggernaut dazed already, so Juggernaut didn't cop any damage. But being able to get two or three people in that with a five or six dice. Morgan may be considering his options here. Whether or not he does a... So I think he might be considering maybe a, a mixed technique spender for the stagger on uh, Black, Black Widow into either Sam or Miss Marvel. And Miss Marvel, I think, is quite a good sort of uh, Black Widow counter in the fact that she can position herself outside of um, sort of that martial artist range after transforming and really do some work onto, onto Black Widow. So into Seam here for the mixed technique. That stagger trigger. And again. I think yep. the biggest thing is you have to get the damage through as well. Um, it is dicey. Hard. And I, th I think Morgan's probably hoping for the wild here too, just to put himself on the point. That's the stagger at coming out at least. <laughs> yeah, it did spike. It eventually does. I guess, as I said, like Sam is is one still one of those vulnerable pieces. So there's no healing other than the leadership on Nick's side. So if if Morgan adds some attrition pressure under under Sam, um, potentially even a spike from Toad or a throw and an attack from Cage can can sort of come in in clutch. And that's the joy of taking the advanced R and D. You don't get those healing cards. Yeah, but I think it really opened up for, for Nick. I think we're not seeing the full strength of, of what that provides his list in a sort of wider sense. I, I really like that turn one Black Cat steal and stuff on uh, mm -hmm. un, under Steve is, is, is really, really strong. <laughs> it's disgusting. It is, yeah. Being able to go sort of 3-1 uh, up on hammers or 4-1 or up on um, cubes or spiders can be a really big game swing. It's a lot faster than getting an extra book. On, uh, yeah. So sure. Sam shaking the stagger. This is where it really hurts having that four wide now. We've only got Miss Marvel I left. I think so. Are oh, they saying that Miss Marvel? I think he's. I think Nick's left her. For last activation for a reason. I can. I think Morgan's measuring maybe for spender range here, because um, Sweet Christmas is a range three here. So I'm expecting to see that potentially come out, and also to see the range two from Hulk was the teenagers to ignore. Oh yep. You do also have the range three push from Miss Marvel as well. Sorry, sorry. Oh, uh, good comment from the chat from Omnis was the book beam, not thunderclap. Oh, okay, yeah. If it makes sense as to why I didn't see the power come out. So I think the range three, we're seeing a spender from Cage here. I think I see the four power, power come up on that. <laughs> he's got 10, so he's got plenty to spare. Yeah, there we go. Sweet Christmas, just in time for the uh, wintry season up here in the Northern Hemisphere. He got the wild too, and that's a big dice spike for Morgan. That's that's very big. Oh, as you were saying, dice cut swings and roundabouts, and they've now swung back. Yeah, back. I mean it always does, right? That is that a Marvel dice? A, days a brutal thing. Marvel out of that. It is, and I think Morgan's just checking the timing. So it's after the attacks resolve for the throw, so Morgan won't throw. Uh, but Miss Marvel will will take five and days there, and he'll get another leadership trigger uh, this time on Sam. He's just moving him to heal it. Which will mean we'll see Toad move last here. Mm, Interesting to see if point. 
leaves the vulnerable Toad at the back there with a book. Yeah, I would expect Toad to come and uh, contest this middle shelter and maybe throw a book beam or a push into Sam. Mm -hmm. So maybe a, a move. I think, yeah, it's just measuring the range three for either attack. But probably a move. So if he does the jump first here, it means he can measure out and place perfectly with the move. So I think that's probably the way to go. So I'm expecting a hop here from Toad and then a measure... And probably a book beam, I would expect. The attrition option with six dice gives him more um, more likelihood of, of getting some work on Sam. So I'd say definitely slight advantage Morgan here into this into this next round with Juggernaut. Um, now having a throw online, Cage still being up, and Nick sort of starting to slowly lose being an activation down. Looking at the tactics cards before, you can see sort of Morgan's cards were all needed at the start here. Uh, a lot of defensive tech. Well, it's not really rolled over into Nick's side yet. Being able to make it hasn't. Use of mission objective, obviously, when someone gets dazed, being able to throw that around can be big towards the end there. Um, and now probably Brace for Impact is going to be online from Juggernaut being flipped next turn. Um, Bird of Prey, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't read that card a whole lot. I think the Bird of Prey is a reroll. Um, it's the ad, adds dice and does rerolls. It's it, it's good, I think, into his, into Morgan Sam, mm -hmm. um, but he's the only target on Morgan's side that it can be used against. And then events R and D, I think, has gone past its use now. Yeah, I still think there's some use cases. Oh, okay, so we're seeing the spender here from Toad into Hulk. So maybe give Morgan an attrition option in a Hulk and add some pressure. Oh, that throws on the incinerate, does it? Yeah, it's automatic incinerate. Yeah. I don't mind that. A bit of damage through. Mm -hmm. We've got a few options now as well because we've got Luke's got a lot of power. Uh, so getting a bit more mm. damage into Hulk. Juggernaut's a bit lower on power at the moment, so he doesn't move. And you do have, if need be, Black Widow could th possibly throw her uh, uh, mixed technique into Hulk if need be to get the stagger off now with one less defensive dice. Yeah, so we're seeing how close this is now with Nick getting that book back and tying the center point. It's literally a one-point game in it. It might force... Um... Nick to go with Hulk again first, get that attrition out, but then missing out on the control side of it. I think the danger of that is that that then opens up Morgan to a a situation where he can really go after Hulk damage wise. Mm, that is true. So maybe that's what Morgan was attempting to force out there. So I think it, it's it's interesting. You're right. Um, there's some really interesting decisions to like for this for this turn. I think. Yeah. And you're right. If if Hulk has a big activation and sort of KO's Cage and maybe even, I mean, ideally KO's Juggernaut in the one attack, um, then the game can swing really quickly. Well, you've got Sam sitting at the back there as well now with three wounds on him. Yeah, but I, th I think it's the KO's here that are going to uh, really matter because I think they're going to be the impactful pieces with all that power sitting on them. Mm -hmm. What range is the book? Is it three? Range three, yeah. Yeah, okay. They're going to get Sam unless you can get a sneaky throw off there as well, allowing you to sneak on that back point. Yeah, this is a, this is a really tight game. Superbly yeah. played by both players. And it, it seems like the dice round to round are, are swinging it. So it swung Nick's way earlier with the big spikes from Hulk and then really brutally, uh, like brutally against Nick that last round between having uh, Ghost Spider and uh, Miss Marvel just sort of dazed out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. What I'm looking at here is the only person, if you do happen to daze Sam, the only person that can contest one for one is Toad at this point. Um, and then you True. can also throw a sneaky, if it works out the way, you could do a double long move with Sam from one backgammer to the other. I don't think, I, from my view though, I think you've got Cage, Juggernaut and Toad all with some form of displacement. That is um, true, yeah. And they use so, three wide. Uh, <laughs> so you can send them later on. Ah, oh, so we're seeing a throw here. I think he's just throwing the bushes into someone. Yep, so Miss Marvel, I think, activating here. 
to throw into Toad, which gets around the slippery because you can't slippery away from the throw. So Nick looking at the points here. <clears throat> and Miss Marvel with Embiggen is, is probably a pretty good uh, chance to uh, potentially get Toad and or uh, Black Widow here. Yeah. So you say massive model when you bring her out on the table. Yeah, she she does some great things. I'm, I'm loving seeing Miss Marvel on the table here, and she could be she could this could be incredibly clutch for for Nick here. We've already seen the throw come in and do some use, and now with her five dice with three rerolls um, builder, um, potentially seeing some lay down. It's hard to tell which character this is. Whether it's Toad. Toad's got the points, so I would expect it to be Toad. Three dice roll as well. Yep, so Toad. So Toad's dazed, which will give Morgan a leadership trigger, but it will give Miss Marvel a book here. And when she transforms back, she might even be able to go on that back point. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested to see if maybe... Oh, so Morgan playing, playing aggressively here. It will also depend if Hulk can survive as well. 11 damage left with an incinerate. I can't see... I, I, I can't see... Morgan going into Hulk here as a as okay. a first option, unless unless Hulk activates first and Morgan sees a, a path to victory through dazing Hulk. But I think if you've got you've got now points on Sam and on Miss Marvel, and both are Miss Marvel's already injured, so she'd be right high on my kill list to day to KO first. Um, and Sam obviously still having yet to activate would would both be good targets. And I think good placement here, like subtly, like there's a lot to Miss Marvel's placement here, I think, in the fact that Morgan may have been able to use Toad where Toad is positioned with this leadership trigger to stop his own juggernaut being thrown into cage. And maybe he's, what he's, Morgan's looking at here is to avoid the throw with that size one banner in front of cage. Um, yeah, okay. But the placement from Nick with Miss Marvel has denied that to some extent um, because Morgan can't move to that side. So... Morgan, I think, still positioning well enough to get around it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm expecting maybe Miss Marvel to go into Black Widow here because she's outside of martial artist range. So with the, the book, book attack here, because Morgan's only rolling two energy defense. Oh, no, sorry. Maybe the normal attack then? Or does she always get to reroll three? She's got the Inhumans reroll, doesn't she? No, the Morphogenics. Oh, Morphogenics. So she also gets the reroll on the beam, which is neat. So that was a... Wow. Yeah. There you go. That's a neat little... I had a feeling that was only on the build-up. So the reroll's there for Miss Marvel. So Miss Marvel, very strong there. Dazing Toad, taking the, <laughs> the point, the book back, and then getting rid of uh, Black Widow. Exactly and Morgan now with another leadership trigger. Talking about earlier where you haven't seen her much on the table, but she's pulling her work here, that's for sure. And now the transform potentially out of harm's way. So we'll see Morgan do his leadership trigger before the transform at the end of the activation. And it does change up a little bit as well. You've got that one long mover floating around. Because he has no way so, of really threatening the back of the board now on Sam's side. Oh, sorry, Nick's side. Advanced R&D here too from Miss Marvel. So I think he's recognising that Miss Marvel is likely to probably take some... She's not doing much more with her power here this turn. And she's likely to be a, a high kill target for Morgan. So I like this that he's putting Miss Marvel sort of out of the way, out of danger as much as possible. And if Morgan wants to go after Miss Marvel, then he's really going to have to um, put, potentially pull himself out of position um, to, to, get, to get her, which can, uh, I guess, very much advantage Nick as the, the round goes on. Yeah. Yeah, he's only got the, the long move on Sam. And then it's a short move on mm. Luke. 
No, medium on Luke. Medium, okay. It's very interesting because Morgan almost wants to hold his activation here, I think. So I'm interested to see where Morgan activates here. And it might even be Sam in my mind. Would you go with a Luke into a Sweet Christmas into Hulk? I mean, potentially to get damage through, but the more you power up Hulk here, the worse your swing back activation is going to be. Yeah. Um, so I don't think Morgan's as worried about... I mean, there's, there's some things that... Morgan, that uh, Nick can do here with Juggernaut where he can sort of sweet, uh, spend uh, into Juggernaut, throw him sort of towards where Cage is and then use the uh, actual throw. Um, so I think we're seeing just the range two, so just his builder. So I think Morgan's probably hoping for the stagger here. Oh, and he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> that's almost game winning. Oh, you, you feel for Nick here. That's That's really rough. I was thinking so Nick Sweet Juggernaut Christmas had the stagger, but it's the other way around, sorry. No, that was where Sweet Christmas about. has got the throw. Yeah, okay. So that that's that's humongous. That's a that's a really impactful um That's huge. Good chunk of damage onto him as well. It has given him the extra two dice now from seven to twelve. Sorry, 9 to 12. So we're seeing a brace come out here in response to the throw from Cage. And now the spender from Cage. So Morgan going all in on the kill Hulk option. Of course, Hulk st uh, incinerated. Who would... So what well, was the throw coming from Luke Cage? Because it's size 3 though, isn't it? Size 3 and 2. Uh, it's it's size two or less, and within so oh, that banner sorry, was size one. Sorry, I didn't realize they'd thrown the banner. Sorry, I see now. So he's adding a slow, and Hulk's immune to the stun. So, mm -hmm. um, and the throw, he didn't get the wild for the throw. So that was a that was a very that was probably the most you could ask for from Cage. So that certainly makes up for the the big Marvel activation, and I, yep. I don't think Marvel did anything ridiculous. Dice wise, there, but she was certainly impactful. So I think um, with the re rolls, what her impact on the table was what you would expect. But Morgan, I think that activation from Cage was well above what you would expect for him at this point of the game. Um, getting that wild on the on the builder, I think he's going to really hurt Hulk here. Would you think that would force him to play Hulk next? Because I know he's looking at moving Sam, but with Hulk now being on seven health left, with an I think what we what we're seeing is. Maybe Nick fishing to see if uh, Morgan is going to bait out a leadership trigger. So if he can bait out a leadership trigger or and get Hulk clear that stagger, um, Nick potentially puts himself in a really good situation. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I could see Juggernaut just sliding and throwing Sam off that back point if he activates as well. He can, yeah. So potentially Juggernaut can do some real work here if he activating last. He can sort of move, sit himself from two of Sam, throw Sam away, slide, then hit, um, potentially even Hulk off that, that back point. So um, Juggernaut's maneuverability here, especially with him, um, so, with him powered up uh, with sort of three power, opens up some real options for Morgan, especially if he sort of takes a damage from an attack or two. Hmm. I wonder if Sam's trying to go sneak that back point somehow. I don't think he can put two damage onto. Oh, he's got. I the think charge. he's probably look, he's looking at birds of prey here potentially. So he's got the power for a charge birds of prey. Mm -hmm. Trying to daze the other opponent, Sam, and grab that back point. Yeah, so I think he might be looking if if he doesn't he activates Hulk or if he can somehow fit there, then can he threaten his Sam? Yeah, because that'll force uh, Juggernaut to come back then and try and deal with him rather than going for his own home point. Mm. And maybe Morgan just bites the bullet and goes all in the Hulk here. Mm -hmm. It's interesting seeing that the, the chat's just obviously caught up to where 
the uh, staggers happened. Yeah, yeah. I lost chat there for a bit. I was trying to bring it up. That's why I missed out on that throw there. With the leg <laughs> Good post. <comment> from <laughs> about uh, Morgan having to get a Luke Cage tattoo. <laughs> yeah. Well, if it ends up being the winning play that that stagger came in uh, with whatever the eleven percent chance or whatever minuscule thing, I'm sure Jacob will know what the figure is, but it's not much of a percent chance coming in. Uh, yeah, tattoo might be an appropriate response. We see the, the charge going off, or the, the is it the birds of prey that works in tandem with the charge? So I think he, I think he has to declare it. So the timing is, it's just when it targets. Um, with an attack. So he's looking to if he can get out. So the cage placement's actually really impactful here. So cage being at the back there might actually stop it. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. I think he's just seen it as well. Because he can't get within one then. No. But I mean, violence, this is this is now turned into the violent realm, right? Mm. So maybe violence is the answer. So it forces his attack into... To Luke, which doesn't allow him to daze Morgan Sam, not allowing him to score the point. <laughs> Omnis, if Colossus was a three threat, Luke is still better. <laughs> Poor Colossus, it's no love for the big guy. So I think maybe we're seeing the charge declared here. I'm interested to see if we do see birds of prey here. Or the, just the beam attack, maybe. Nope, birds of prey. Here we go. It's on. So he'll add in. It'll be a seven dice reroll all attack. So I'd, very good odds of dazing Sam here. Mm-hmm. And Morgan spent the two to add his extra defense dice, but looks at it. Oh, no. Sorry, Morgan does not have the power. That was... Yeah, well, so I think we're going to see a dazed Sam here. Oh, this is so huge. Because this will give... This will give Nick last activation of the game, of the of the turn. Hulk. Oh. It's a cage. It's where Jugs might have to now go into Hulk. Yeah, maybe it's all on Jugs here. You can Hulk I mean, can that's big. just move and throw Luke off and then he scores that back gamma. So I guess brace is not a factor here. I'd be interested to see for damage potential if Morgan maybe moves for jugs, throws the size three, and then goes for a hit in a in a Hulk. Oh, it's it's such <laughs> a high pressure game. And he yeah, he's got the three books as well. Yeah, this is massive. I think this is all, I would say, Nick Nick might even... So at the moment, Nick's getting three from the books. And if he scores that back gamma shelter, that'll take him to 15. Yep. So Morgan's got one activation to stop him getting that. So whether or not maybe Morgan applies pressure through... I mean, Morgan can potentially slow him down if... He can go to to the back gamma shelter on Nick's side, and then maybe maybe change it up. But this is uh, this is right down to the wire. Oh, I thought Juggernaut's throw was a size four. It's only a size three. No, so he can throw that. The best damage throw here he can use is size three. Um, sort of the crates there, just um, below Miss Marvel. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking he could displace Hulk, but he can't because he's only size size four. Yeah, it's 
So the builder into Juggernaut, into Hulk here. Good block. It's only the four. So it's probably not enough to get him. Interested to see if Morgan plays for the extra round here and maybe puts pressure on that back. Game of shelter and slides yeah. slides through. And sort of forces Hulk. I mean, Hulk can guarantee... Well, either way, Nick will get six. And yeah, Morgan can't 13, score enough. 15. So I, th I think that's game. So that same activation swinging back. Yep. Because all Hulk needs to do here is, yeah, shake, shake the stagger. Game of throw. Yeah, he shakes the stagger. So interesting there if Morgan had gone into into Miss Marvel holding that book. Instead, whether or not he would have got that through, but I think he's trying to weigh up the scoring options here. Size two and one. I think Morgan's only saving grace will be his priority next turn. I don't think it's going to go into another round though, right? Won't it go 15 to 13? Morgan doesn't have any of the books. So He's... Nick will score three for the books. Sorry to go to 12. No, you're right. Sorry, there is another round. I'm miscalculating. Oh, good. He needs seven, and he's going to get six. So you're yeah. right. It's going to go into one more round. Morgan has priority, so I'm not sure what he can do with it, though. Yeah, not getting more damage through on Hulk Day is, I think, going to be very impactful. Saying that, Morgan will score some more here, and then he's going to have more pieces to score next round. Okay, so I miss. I definitely miscounted that there. We're all hunched over. <laughs> it's getting very intense now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm leading right in. <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's what you want, right? That's just, this is what finals MCV is all about. Gamma leap throw. So the staggers certainly stopped some damage coming through here, I think. Um, and it's kept Morgan's pieces alive a bit more. Yeah, so my bad maths, adding uh, 9 to 6. <laughs> it's uh, 15, not 16. Do you think there is enough damage down that back end if Morgan takes the turn with Luke or Sam into Hulk? <sighs> it's... It's it's any it's it's still anyone's game. Gamma, there's so many points available. Anything can happen. And having priority, if Morgan days if Morgan KOs Hulk, for example, mm -hmm. um, gets the book back, and then can keep his pieces alive. And can if Morgan can get Hulk and Miss Marvel and score the the points difference, then I think it's huge. So what we're seeing here is, so Morgan will go to um, thirteen here. 
So he's going to get three for the uh, opposing shelter. So it's going to be 15 to 13. So there's a two-point disparity in it. And Morgan will have priority. Yep. So I think if Hulk drops, Morgan's in with a very good shot. Um. So yeah, it's 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 incredibly close. So for me, I think it all comes down to this first activation of this next round. Yep. And whether or not Hulk goes. Now I wonder, so he's left Luke in range two of Hulk. Oh, for just for his last attack, that's right. That makes sense. Yeah, so if he gets the wild here, which is a good chance. Yeah, this is this is good for... Yeah, okay. Um, this is definitely another good attack for left. Oh, that's big. That's cage gone. Oh, that's huge. Yeah. Or that sand might to do be going fire. there. Yeah, I mean, it's possible, but it's it's a bigger ask. I think Cage would have been a really good option for Morgan there into into Hulk. Yep. And if he'd been pushed away and if he'd survived and won it, it's a 13 to 15, you know, a, into a fifth round. Our biggest, the, the biggest issue, I think, for Morgan is he's got all flipped characters, whereas Nick has at least Sam on his healthy side. True, but I I, I, I with the points as it is, one of them, I think, unless they somehow tie the round, are going to score it out this next round. Yeah, do we rely on Sam to do five damage? or? or I mean, look, the question is, I mean, maybe Sam does a his spender here, right? Could have been assault. It's all in the... No, just a builder. builder first. Big hit. He's done three now puny banner. Yeah, and we've seen the defensive rerolls really come in here for Hulk. So my first question for Morgan after this game, regardless of how this round goes, is does he regret not bringing his own Hulk into this? So Hulk's taken one there. He's got four left. Big hit from Sam again. Two damage through there under the opposing Sam. And a push. Can you risk it for the biscuit and just go for another shield throw? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he's, no, he's done the, he's done the spender here. Now. This is all damage. So to get four damage through on Hulk here, which is it's a big ass, but it all I mean it's yep. down I think it's down to this dice roll. No, not what Morgan needed. They both rolled terribly, but uh, he's got puny banner anyway. It does. I mean it's never over, right? No. The game is never over. Juggernaut can do some ludicrous things with his movement. So Morgan moving his uh, Sam just with the um, place two there. This uh, this game has had my heart in my mouth for both <laughs> players uh, multiple times throughout. It's uh it's it's very good to watch. It's the joy of the attrition route, isn't it? Well it is, and I think Gamma Force is the fight, right? Yeah. Like we that it started a very control based game and like there's a form of control in this as, as to who they're targeting and the throws and stuff. It's very much turned to violence now and it's come down to the dice box, which I think is a, a good close game of MCP. But the difference between the players is maybe the variance in some of this. So 
Toad lives. Is that me? Yeah, health. it's a Montes Montesi attack. So I think the danger here is all the pieces that haven't activated, right? Yeah. So Morgan, I think the, the obvious play here is the Slippery. Then we got a Ranger Sam. Well, there is no out of range of Sam in, in some ways because Sam can just... Sam's able to just charge wherever he needs to go. Oh, that is true. I'm interested to see where the Hulk, where Hulk ends up here, because whether he keeps him in safety, or whether he just throws Sam off the point to give him just that little bit more scoring potential. Yeah, like I was saying before, I think the one issue is Sam, the Nick's Sam is healthy, so he's just going to out-contest any of Morgan's characters. Yeah, he can, as you said, he can just now walk on that back point. Yeah. Um, and I guess the consideration for for Nick here is, does he want Sam to contest one of the other points as a last activation move um, and leave Hulk out of danger from Juggernaut? Although Juggernaut can make the distance back, so... I suppose Morgan was already set up to take uh, an attack with Juggernaut, so he doesn't get much other leadership if Toad does get KO'd. And Sam's mm -hmm. not doing much either because he's already securing that back point. Morgan doesn't really have any good targets for the leadership here. I mean, no. you potentially give Juggernaut a move towards, but even if Juggernaut gets Hulk here... Um, Sam can just, if unless he gets Hulk and Sam, then Nick can just move on to the middle point. If Nick can score both the middle and the and Morgan's back gamma, then I think that's still game. Do you maybe see a, what, a slide and move somehow throw Sam into Hulk? There's not enough ranges there. No, nah, there's not enough. Getting low on the clocks as well. We've got 14 minutes on Morgan's side. I think we'll get through it. I think they'll have more than enough time. I think it feels like it's getting close to... But I, th I think either way, I can see this definitely being the last round. Is this just to give Toad cover because he's got no good leadership triggers? Yes, that, and I think it's also if Morgan wants to, if uh, Nick wants to throw, he's going to have to put himself potentially out of position a bit more. Okay. So he's got he's got a gamma leap move throw available. I suppose that probably nearly gives him enough. No, the short move wouldn't be enough to get back on that middle gamma if he does happen to daze someone. Well, he might be happy just to remove the threat of Toad here. Because that only leaves Morgan with one activation. Mm -hmm. The guaranteed damage here. So Toad and a bit of extra damage into Juggernaut. Yeah. Good play. Mm -hmm. So Hulk very much in my eyes proving to be a a nuisance for Morgan at the moment just to deal with. Taking two damage for his troubles as well. So he'll spend one to reduce and take... I oh, know he takes two. So Morgan letting the damage go through. Maybe so, for the power. So Juggernaut was definitely going to most likely daze Miss Marvel here. Well, so this is so Morgan can potentially move, throw the crates. Mm -hmm. That may daze Miss Marvel straight up. Um, so he can move, throw the crates, 
days Miss Marvel straight up or potentially slide, but I'm not sure he's going to have the power to do everything. So the throw's three. So he's got a throw or the play. I go, my, my preferred play here is almost move. Uh, move within range of the throw from the size three to Marvel. Attack, get the power, attack Hulk, hopefully KO Hulk, spend one to, uh, or drop the book somewhere, then slide back, or sorry, throw the size three and then slide back to that back point. So there's a potential that he can remove both Hulk and Miss Marvel here. If he can And I do think that. if he can do that and sit on the back point, Nick's only play would be to double move to that back point and score it. So then Morgan would then be getting one book plus one for the back, which would take him to 15, and Nick would still get one to go to 16. So I think either way, best case for Morgan, Nick still goes to 16 here if that if he does that move sequence right. Because yeah, Morgan's down two, and he has all three books on Nick's side. Yeah. Maybe already in our game. So the max Morgan can get is five. And Sam can instantly score four, putting him to the win already. But, I mean, potentially the positioning of where Juggernaut ends up on that final bit is what he might be able to stop physically stop Sam's base size fitting. Because wouldn't Sam just move on to... Oh, so wouldn't Nick just move on to Morgan's home base, scoring him four points, three for the back gamma and one for the book? And the most yeah, I mean, maximum the other... Morgan can get is five, still putting him one behind. Yeah, so I think it comes down to if... I mean, Sam can just move to Morgan's back point here and get four guaranteed, right? Yes, and the most Morgan can get is five points, two from the books and one yeah. from things back down, but that still puts him behind by one. 18 and so if, if he potentially spikes under Miss Marvel here, if he spikes under Miss Marvel, there's a potential he can maybe slide and do a throw into Sam, mm. depending on the range. Can he get in but range Sam, to he'll... throw... No, he can't even throw mm. Sam at anyone because he one damage. Sam will have a leadership trigger, so he can put himself out of range. Yeah. So I think there's, there's almost too much here for Juggernaut to do. So Morgan's passed here, which I think is not a bad option. Mm. Hulk's already gone, just didn't get ticked. So it's just Sam and Jug's left. I think I'm with a sneaky way of somehow phasing Sam. Well, I think that the day, way the day seems, you just move towards. Mm. I think Morgan's probably counting the points out here. I think he has to get rid of Sam. If he doesn't get rid of Sam, yeah, it's well, game. It's game. But Nick's still getting two from his other books and one from his back. Yeah. So I, I, the only way I can see it is maybe if that size three is in range and Miss Marvel doesn't roll any dodge dice, any successful dodges and takes four damage. And then Juggernaut moves, slides and hits Sam. Is it worth even going damage. for Miss Marvel at this point? Because I think she's still scoring. That's... I think you've got to remove her still, right? But the danger is as soon as you do that, you then give Sam a yeah. leadership trigger. And Sam's the one that's going to cause the most issues because he's heal healthy. He can just jump on whatever points he needs to with the double long move. What range is Juggernaut's throw? Must it push? He can't throw Hulk. If 
Uh, so he might be going for it all just to, with a, a builder here because that's potentially a way that Morgan gets both. Mm-hmm. If he can daze both pieces and deny the scoring, he can stay ahead. So we'll push Hulk now towards Sam, won't he? Somewhat towards Sam. Still not over. If Morgan gets damage through here. Oh, so he's getting Hulk at the moment. And obviously the defensive reroll here. So he dazes. Mm-hmm. Leadership trigger. Got enough power to do one more slide. Yeah, I think it's game. Yeah. I think it all, yeah, there was just, just some big moments in that. Sam just scores where sorry, Nick just scores wherever he needs to now. Just ends it out. Yeah, I think we just see a quick move and secure. Yep. I'll let you know I guess we'll move over it uh when you're ready if you want to give him maybe a couple of minutes. Yeah, yep. Let them sort of talk about what they're doing here. I'll just type type in. We'll lose. We'll be losing uh, Phil's camera feed in a second here when we jump over to chat. But uh, yeah, that's game there. No worries. Well, the boys have ended up. Uh, we've got a few questions we're going to ask them when we move over. Um, we'll see you all over there. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Good. Uh, firstly, uh, congratulations and uh, to you, Nick, and condolences to you, Morgan. That was a that was a, truly a uh, an exciting game of Marvel. Marvel. I think I uh, was breathless there for multiple points throughout that game, and it was just uh, swings the whole time. So, uh, thank you for letting us uh, share in that in that journey with both of you. There were some big dice. There were some big. Uh, there were some big dice um, <laughs> results that need to occur throughout that game, wasn't there? It was wild yeah. to see the the stagger from uh, Luke Cage, but he Hulk. Yeah, that him. was that was really brutal. But uh, Hulk still rolled like crazy. We did have a few questions for you guys. If you're welcome to questions, absolutely. Yeah, I'll go with you first, Morgan. Um, look, to both of you, it was a brilliant game to see. So it was a shame to see Morgan go down as the the local player, but a um, brilliant game by Nick there, though. Absolutely, thoroughly enjoyed watching it. Uh, but for Morgan here, um, what did you think were the major things about your opponent's list that you were sort of con- concerned about and need to get a lot of practice in against? Yeah, I mean, the obvious one is the extracts. So I think if Nick had one priority, I'm not going to say he would automatically win the game, but he would have a very strong chance of winning the game on his extracts. I think uh, against Legacy, I'm not even sure. It was about probably one in four I gave myself to win Legacy. Um, and the the other extracts on the, the F shapes, he's just got the better stealing tech. So it would depend on the secure, but I didn't like my chances there, so I was actually really pleased. Um, the first thing that went my way was getting priority. That was really good um, to give me the extracts. Um, wasn't the best extract, but it was not the worst. I think Senators was probably the worst. I think Montessi was in the middle, and I was really hoping for scrolls. So that went well. Um, unfortunately, he's got the dichotomy of legacy in his extracts and gamma in his secures. And on the balance, gamma is, is really bad in this, this matchup, but it was better than legacy. So I was disappointed to see gamma. Um, I was really praying for anything but, but gamma, but I was very pleased that I won priority, so I can't complain too much. Okay. And then with sort of the power of hindsight, 
was there anything that you felt you played incorrectly or would have done completely different? Yeah, it's a good question. Hindsight's really interesting in Marvel because dice will often make you look like a legend and a really smart decision maker, or they'll make you look like a fool and make you look like you should have done something different. So noting that comment, um, a big decision for me I found, or I thought that was critical for this game was in, I think, round two, Nick, when I did my juggernaut activation and I had to choose to, to walk up, throw Hulk away and sit on the point, uh, on the middle point, or uh, to choose violence and try a big nine dice beam into Ghost Spider. So I thought if I could have a really good attack with a nine dice spike and one shot her, and then I could throw Hulk away, I'd be in a really strong position. So I chose the aggressive option there, and the dice made me look like a fool because I think I got one hit, um, which happens. Um, so I think in hindsight, what I think I'd, if I did that again, I would throw Hulk away and do a safe option of just moving on to the point and then just delaying the, the game a bit further because I also gave Hulk a bunch of power and, and let him do some, you know, he did two beautiful big attacks there um, that one-shot a couple of characters. So not maybe maybe he didn't one-shot a couple of characters, but I gave him power and, and gave him extra dice and, and that was the turning point for me where I was really going from, okay, I was feeling good in the lead to I'm in massive trouble here because this gambit didn't pay off. But that's how I felt. Nick, did you feel similar on that, that activation? Yeah, um, that was basically one of the big decision points. The The first really big decision point you had was that one for sure. And yeah, like when you went chose to go with the aggressive play, like it really came with a big drawback that you weren't getting on the gamma. And that suddenly gave me some really good opportunity to then also go for the more aggressive plays with Ulk while maintaining control of the middle, which was insanely beneficial for me. So yeah, definitely I that inside is 2020 for sure on that yeah, um, at yeah. least at, at, at the very least ghost spider dodged zero on that dodge and still ended up going down um so but yeah it, it ending up costing both the do you know and the juggernaut attack was uh rough um hmm. i expected you to maybe just uh not bump in range and then do a strike to gain power off of it if you were dealing damage the way the way the dices ended up uh didn't really pay off, but uh, I was expecting that maybe. Um, but for sure, uh, yeah, that was a, a really big turning point in the game. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's that, you... sorry, go ahead, keep going. Yeah, yeah. Outside of that, like I felt like because all of my models at displacement had like the edge on controlling the secure, uh, so I felt comfortable like overall with maintaining control outside of that. Uh, the only thing is, see, like, Mission Objective is the last card I chose to brought, and I really should have brought Escort to Safety instead. Um, I uh, un overestimated uh, how fast I would be dropping objectives and having to mission. Um, but, yeah. That's yeah, it's tough up. because, um, I mean, it's a great question as well, because the, the violence versus caution, um, Nick highlighted that beautifully. All these models have got displacement, so I thought, okay, I probably need to remove a body here to, to have a longer-term advantage um, because I think eventually he would sort of wear me down. Whilst I was had a big lead, 5-2 is a great lead on Gamma, um, I think he would have worn my little weenies down over time, and so I, I, I tried to match it. So hindsight, maybe that was the wrong play. Maybe I should have just thrown Hulk cautiously away and sat there and, and let Hulk go bed on Juggernaut. But um, we will never know. But uh, that felt like a key point for me for the game. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's a very in-depth answer. Um, did you have any questions at all, Phil, for Nick? Yeah, I do, um, actually. I guess uh, to, to flip the questions back for you, Nick, what were, I guess, the major things about Morgan's List in the lead-up to that game that you were concerned about or felt that you needed to take into account, particularly with that crisis set up? And I guess if you can talk us through your, I guess, decision to play the roster that you did um, today that uh, we saw. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, well, first of all, this is actually the team I like to play in Gamma at 15. I think it's a really solid uh, setup against most game most teams, um, especially if I'm expecting other big guys. I like having... I was expecting Hulk, so that's why like Gwen can displace Hulk. Uh, against Juggernaut, it's a bit more awkward. I didn't expect that. But overall, I, just like Morgan said, I think he nailed the, the expectations on how the Crisis setups would pan out really similarly to me. I was hoping uh, Extracts-wise, if it was uh, is Extracts, which, like, obviously, whoever wins Bryo in this um, matchup chooses Extracts, because in my Extracts, I'm heavily favored 
Well, Irian, I was really hoping to dodge scrolls, like uh, Morgan said, um, for sure. And in my six years, I was hoping for Gamma the most. Uh, so, And then Mutant Madman as being the more neutral, and Terrigen being probably bad for me. And uh, yeah, outside of that, yeah, there wasn't anything... Like, I think Morgan really nailed it down as to... Uh, I had the same thinking as far as like how the matchup would be approached. Uh, I was expecting True Hulk to be able to gain the Etrestian advantage in that setup against his guys once the teams were revealed. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I guess, thank you for a, a great response um, to that question. I guess, were there any things that you wish you'd done differently, I guess, with the hindsight now at the end of the game? Um, or I guess any self uh, errors or things that you would have changed in your approach during the game, I guess, now that you, you sort of saw that uh, saw match that unfold, or were you happy with it? Um, I think I'm pretty happy overall. Like, I think considering how everything went, I don't think I would change that many things. The only thing is really... Uh... I think to think if there's something I was unhappy with. Um, oh yeah, when I no, um, I can't think of anything that I was really unhappy with. The only thing, like I said, is like pre-game I should have not brought mission of brought mission objective in that setup. I was as I. That's the only thing. Um, I can't really think of anything else, honestly. I. Don't know if Morgan has something he thinks I should have done differently. I think. I, I, I thought. Anything. Yeah, I thought you played really well. Um, I can't. I was a bit surprised you went Avengers Assemble as early as you did. But generally in the Avengers matchup, you probably know this as well as I do. When one player plays Avengers, the other player almost has to as well. So yeah. I was probably surprised you did that as early as you did because I was always going to win that middle with Avengers Assemble. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that reminds yeah. me of something. Um, I oh yeah, that's uh, the one thing I should have done a bit differently. I really wanted to hold an extra power on Sam for a charge next turn, but I should have used advanced R and D, and given that power to Ghost Spider, so that mm -hmm. instead of, of attacking, she could have went after the Avengers assemble because I knew we were also gonna offset it with yours. Mm -hmm. Could have gambled with Ghost Spider moving directly in the middle and pushing off Black Widow with the power from R and D, mm -hmm. um, and that would have. Tied the middle if Sam failed to say push Ghost Spider. But I felt mm. that was a bit dicey. So I was like, ah, at worst, we'll kind of like trade Avengers Assemble, which I was fine with. Because I was like, once it's done, I, I know I can like move your models around more and like be confident in that aspect. Mm. And uh, I like my positioning to just grind down because like Black Widow is a nice model, but I really don't like her in Gamma Wave. So like, for, uh, I think she ends up like getting beaten down pretty heavily. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, apart from that, I, th I thought you played really well. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think you deserve the win. Um, I thought maybe your attack dice were, were... I had a couple of good ones, but I thought yours were pretty good. I felt a bit unlucky getting, you know, cage one yeah. shot a couple of times, things like that. They're, they're mine. That's yeah, just yeah. Kind of nice things, but um, I thought you played really well, mate. Yeah, yeah. Well, that the dice rates, you don't control them. So, like, once yeah. they happen, you kind of, like... In MCP, I find like to have success, like you have to adapt to what the dice is giving. That's right. Yeah. So like, uh, the, you, I don't make it. I don't really make any expectations. I just roll the dice, and then once something happens, I'm like, okay. Like I was never expecting to this juggernaut that early. <laughs> and then once I dealt a bunch of damage in him, like, okay, I guess now yeah. <laughs> this is suddenly suddenly on the table. I can look at dazing juggernaut, which. Yeah, that was right. Uh, suddenly changes. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, exactly but, right. But that you don't have any control on. So that's right. Uh, once the dice has happened, you have to roll with them and go with the flow. This was going to be... Uh, I did. I do believe, though, that my team had way more opportunities to throw attacks than yours. I agree. In general. Yep. Uh, agree. So that also helps with just having more spikes, right? Um, it feels like I had more, but I threw so many more dices that I feel that in the end that might just be the reason why, because I... I was double tapping way more often with uh, well, Miss Marvel once in Big In, uh, Oak yeah. just double tapped almost all game. Uh, Sam also. Uh, that stagger on Luke Cage really put some. <laughs> when Luke Cage happy. landed yeah. the stagger, that was pretty rough. That like put me on the back foot more. Uh, but yeah, I I agree that like, my dices were really generous and definitely put pressure on you. But yeah, I, I feel like I did a few more attacks and that also helped out in the end. 
Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You, you've got a you've got a, a good punchy squad, and I was playing defensively. So I, I didn't want to say the dice would do, you know determine the game, but I was just saying that. Um, yeah, 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 for sure. For yeah, sure. It's, it's a gamma. A gamma is a yeah. We know what it's like. You go throw a swing and see what happens. So, yep. Poor old KG boy. Yes. I did just have a question for you, Morgan. I noticed in the first of the two rounds, you had a lot of base blocking movements. Did you find that over the game, especially with Nick's amount of control, did you find that quite taxing? Trying to sort of set up as many base blocking and throwing blocking movements as possible. Yeah, good question. Um, yeah, I, I tried to keep it in mind as much as possible. I think I had two small positional errors late in the game. I had Luke Cage on my back point, and I put him in a position where he wasn't blocking the gamma. I think I, if if I could have forecast forward to Juggernaut maybe displacing and Hulk being staggered. Maybe I, I place Luke Cage a bit differently to try. I don't think I could achieve it, but maybe I could have for a base block. Turns out it doesn't really didn't really matter. I don't think. Um, but yeah, base blocking was 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 taxing. There was a lot of you know you've got a high mobility team um, and Hulk. I think Hulk had the last a couple of rounds too, which caught me off guard because I was I was expecting to have the last activation most of the time. So yeah, it is taxing. Um, but I think I did one of them, which was effective to stop a gamma leap, and the rest probably didn't matter too much. I don't think. Do you have any last questions for anyone, Phil? I've pretty much got all mine racked out there. Yeah, I, th I think I'm done here. Um, thank you, I guess, to both of you for such a, a high-quality game. And uh, you both obviously had a, another incredible run to get to this point um, and played a superb game. And it's great to see, um, I guess, the, such a high-quality game uh, going on um, yet again uh, in the final. So um, best of luck to, to Nick, I guess, next round. And thank you very much, Morgan and uh, Nick, for letting us uh, stream this game and, and commentate and really appreciate it. Thank you, Morgan. And yeah. Nick, it was a pretty full watch. No, it was great. And Nick, well done. Um, great win, mate. I said you played spectacularly. Um, I've enjoyed watching your games and I will continue to do so. And I wish you luck moving forward. Carry that Avengers torch <laughs> that no one else cared about but us. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's good, mate. And it was, it was a pleasure to play with you. And I'll leave the last word for you, mate. Yes, uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to get to the finals. Morgan, you were a great opponent. I was super excited to play with you. Uh, that was a really nice game. Like, uh, yeah, you did some, like, the, the base blocking point was a, a really good point. Like, I really like how you approached it. Uh, you did some really nice stuff over there. It was really great. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot, guys, for the stream. Thanks, Morgan, for the game. And uh, I'm excited to go to the finals. Best <laughs> of luck to you, Nick. Thanks. Catch us later. Have a good rest of your day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cheers, Ed. Right. Thank you.